God's call in the glory land. We welcome you to Coffee and Connect with Larry and Gloria Lundstrom, Nashville, Tennessee. Our special guest every time we have one is Marnie. And we thank you for being with us at our home base in South Dakota. Yes, yes. And we are just happy the sun is shining again. It's spring wants to get here so badly. And I wanted to get here badly too. And it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How are you doing, Marnie? I am doing great. I, Good. as with you guys, we're just excited that we've had uh, finally um, some sun shining once in a while and just no longer in the insanely cold. And so, you know, it's one of those days where it's still really cold, but you feel like you could run outside without a jacket on. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. We've been just kind of uh, busy doing this and that. I mean, it's that time of year. Well, there's, I believe there are what we call silent uh, deadlines that come on you. Like <laughs> for you and Marnie, you'll probably be setting the computer back. That deadline is going to command you to work and to do it. And we have deadlines like that, getting the paperwork, getting all caught up. But uh, I, I don't, I, to me, it's more screaming than silent. It's like, <laughs> it's fine until I go to bed. I'm like, oh no, we've got to get caught up on this. You know, it is with insurance policies and yeah. you know, homeowners and taxes coming up and you're going to rearrange all this stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh my. Well, we're leaning towards income tax season coming up on us. That silent 15th. I don't know if you knew this or not, but the, the uh, IRS has a special account. It's called the guilty conscience account. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. And if for those people that maybe didn't do right on their income tax, they can go back and they can correct it and make it right. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> it would be nice if they would send us back extra gifts, you know. That's maybe why they put the extra 87000 <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. But we're trying to get things in order. You know, it's a time of life. We're on yeah. with a lot of our partners, and there's a lot of them that are going through struggles physically. And we've had several partners that passed away, dear friends, yes. and young and old and middle age. And then you begin to realize that life is really fragile. And I hear these kids of these families say, the who've lost their parents, they say, get your house in order. They say, get your stuff so you don't leave us with a mess. And I, you know, you think you get it together and then you're, and then you keep looking and then you read this and it's like, wow, you mean you have to do all of that, but it's important yeah. not to leave it, the family in, in a mess. We even worked at, it was 19, I mean, 2017, we started a trust. Yes. There's a, it's, ours is called a revocable trust, but there's irrevocable. Okay. Well. So what's the. Well, uh, irrevocable cannot be changed. Okay, so the revocable can be changed. Can be changed. Yes, but the irrevocable cannot be changed. And this is what the whole thing is. You see, you look at life, and especially what you just mentioned, Gloria, about we've had several of our friends that have just passed on into eternity. We realize that this world isn't as long as we thought it would be. No, no, and uncertain. Uncertain. And so what happens is that, you know, with... With that, that's exactly why uh, I'm I'm in ministry, and there's a verse on that that talks about God's and it, it's Romans eleven twenty nine. It says God's gifts are without repentance, His gifts and His callings. And one of the things that we treasure more than anything else in our life is the calling that God's placed on our lives. Yes, because we realize when someone comes to Christ which thousands and thousands have, yes. that that is an eternal transaction that's going mm -hmm. to carry them forever and ever and ever. Yes, yes. So revocable in, in terms of what, if it would be will, trust, or whatever written out, you know, your will, whatever. You can change You it. can change that. But irrevocable means yes. it's set. Yes, it's set. And see, there was, what happened was in, in, the, in the, through life and through history, what has happened is that there was four big decisions that were made. Lucifer made the first one. Lucifer was God's uh, special angel in heaven. He was an archangel. 
and he was in charge of God's worship and praise. And uh, what he did is he led praise to God. But I always ask myself, where did this all of this evil, like we're seeing it today, where uh, there must be someone here in town shot every day? Oh, there are. Yes, no doubt. Every yeah. day. We see the the news comes out at night. It's almost scary to see what's happening. And so when you see that happening, you ask yourself, where did all of this evil come from? And then I got looking throughout the scriptures and where Lucifer one day allowed pride to come into his heart and his life. And he says in Isaiah 14, I think it's verses 12 through 15. He says, I will ascend against the sides of the north. I will be like the most high. And he convinced one third of all the angels of heaven to side with him and to go into this battle, trying to cast God off his throne. Then it says further on in those scriptures, it says, I beheld lightning falling uh, as they fall from heaven. Lucifer was cast out of heaven and the third part of his angels. And what happened for that? Well, that decision that he prompted him to go against God, you know why hell was created? In Matthew 25, it says, hell was created for the devil and his angels because he rebelled against God. Rebellion and, and resistance is all part of the devil's nature. That's where that had to come from. But it was but, all to start with a free will. Free will. And that free will shows up in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second massive decision was in the Garden of Eden where, where Eve one day was out and and uh, she noticed that God had told Adam to tell Eve that there's only one tree of the knowledge of the in the garden they didn't want him to touch. That was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And it's, this was a life and death. Now, I always share with people. Well, that's irrevocable decision then. Once they made that, once they sinned. Revocable is, but this was an irrevocable. Yes, yes. Uh, decision she made. And so as a result of that, what happened is uh, God says in Genesis 3.15, he says the, the, he would bruise the serpent, he would crush his head. So that was the first prophecy that talked about the third decision coming up. The third decision was when heaven decided to do a rescue. Okay, that's irrevocable. That's irrevocable. And God said he was going to come. He was going to become, and he was going to come to earth via, he was coming by a womb. Mm -hmm. Then he would be there 33 years and he would rent a tomb. <laughs> yeah. For three they, days. They need it long. Descend to the pits of hell, declare what he has done, and then he would rise again into heaven. So this all is an eternal thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole deal with, with you know, with that. I want to go back to the Adam and Eve one. What happened was that when Adam and Eve sinned, they were driven from the garden. Angel was put in the, in the front of the gate so they couldn't get into the garden. And as they were driven from the garden, uh, what happened was they, then Cain slew his brother Abel. So this brought in that rebellion sin, brought in death. Mm -hmm. Death wasn't even mentioned up until the time of Adam and Eve. Yeah. And then, so he slew his brother, uh, Cain slew his brother Abel. And from there on, we go towards the flood. God saw that evil had, like, we've had friends of ours lately that have had cancer mm -hmm. and how that cancer has traveled, that this cancer has traveled in such a, evil has tra traveled so fast that God says he saw that their consciences mm -hmm. and their thinking was evil continually. And God says, we got to put a stop to it. So God goes and searches. He finds a man by the name of Noah. <laughs> Noah was a righteous man. Yeah. And he used, and he got him to build this huge ark. 
Can you imagine? I mean, well, that's that would be a real project. That's a hundred year project. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I can't imagine. Yes. And so Noah gets in and he builds it. God gives him the specifications to build it. He gives him and everything. And then you would think that people, you know, have ability to mock. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they mocked Noah. Oh, yes. Oh, it was a crazy old man. And the bigger that ark got, because that ark was oh, no small thing. No. And it probably was more laughable as the bigger it got. Yes. But then, uh, but, but I, Noah had it in his heart. He yeah. knew he had heard the voice of God. I put myself in that place of the mocker. I, I was thinking of myself like that, and I thought, you know, if I was mocking this ark, and this guy putting it, they, they never ever seen rain. Water wasn't the thing that they mm -hmm. had to deal with. So I got thinking about that, and I said, but wait, there was a moment when all of a sudden the animals started showing up. Animals that they have not seen anywhere. All of a sudden, God calls them through supernaturally calls them. And these animals start arriving and going onto the ark two by two or seven. Sometimes one kind would be seven birds would be different. He put everything into the ark. And you would think seeing that kind of a phenomena, giraffes, elephants, tigers, everything coming, you'd think that, hey, maybe there's something to this. But they didn't. No, they, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Mm -mm. But, so, th but that didn't detour Noah. No. He wasn't discouraged. He didn't listen to the negative. Right. He remembered the voice of God, what God had told yes. him to do. And so this, this... Then when it got bad, then what happened? Then when it got bad, they started pounding on the sides of the ark wanting in. God closed the door. He says, I don't open it until it's ready to be opened. You know, and to me, when I think about that, that's sad and that's scary because God, his patience is just so long. He's a loving God. We all know that. But he's in he's a God of mercy. Mm -hmm. But when he's done, I always tell about there's some people I know and I'll say, you know what? They are the kindest people. But when they've had it, they've had it. And then watch out. And I believe with God, when he looked down and he saw that what was happening, he just said, OK, enough is enough. I've given them an opportunity, and it was God that shut the door. Yes, it was. It was God. You know, and God only, he's going to reach out. His, the Bible says his spirit will not always strive with man. That's right. And to me, that is the scariest thought, to think that he would pull, the Holy Spirit would back off so we wouldn't hear the promptings of, of uh, come to me. I can forgive your sins. I can change your life. This is your moment. Don't delay but it's all turned off. And then that that is irrevocable. Yes, it is. Because what was happening was all these people, you know, uh, the people that were there and they were wrapping on the side of that ark and all the rest, you know, they didn't know what was going to happen because, you know, it says their, God says their minds and their thinking was evil continually. It never changed. And so God says, I, got, I have to put a stop to it. So then he sends the flood. And so, but what's happening was this, where do you suppose all those people went since it was that evil? They went to the place called hell, prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, they, they could have changed their destiny, but they did yeah. not. Well, that's the third decision then was that God had looked down at earth and he saw mankind and saw the hopelessness of mankind. Now he, had to, he destroyed all but eight people. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then with Noah and his wife, that made eight souls. And with those eight souls, God was going to replenish the earth again and repopulate it. Yes. And this was, so then God said that as he was going to send a rescue to this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God said he was going to send that son. And again, he came as a womb. And soon he, 33 years later, rented a tomb. He just used it. 
Didn't need it for long. Didn't need it for long. Three day. <laughs> and then he ascended to the Father, which is in heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And he says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. But now, this was the third decision, was God coming for mankind. He was going to pay the penalty for the sin that was going on, for which God had to send the flood. He was going to pay for man's sin. So all of us, that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, what makes these things big deals, these are irrevocable, yes. eternal decisions. And God doesn't want any to perish, so he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins. So if we would believe on him, if we would con believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be saved. And God's name would be written, our names would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That Lamb's Book of Life is found in about the 20th chapter of, of Revelation. And that's what God is going to be. There, there's going to be a second coming when he's going to rapture the church out. We'll be taken up and we'll be going out of this world into heaven. And what I sure enjoyed is the fact that we're all through these years that we've worked for the Lord, that we realize the stuff we're working for isn't temporary. No, no, no. There's four really the big decisions today that are irrevocable that were made. Lucifer made the first one when he decided to go against God. Mm -hmm. Then he came to earth and he found Eve in the garden and he convinced her to go against the law which God had commanded. God's commands are irrevocable as well. And as God commanded them, said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there was decision number two. Decision number three is that God was going to send his son to die on the cross so he could reconcile all the sin and evil that Lucifer had done, Adam and Eve had done, everybody had done, and he could make bring us together with God again. By grace, he would give to us God's unmerited favor he would bring to us, and we could pray and we could ask God to come into our heart and our life. And if we would do that and sincerely mean it and turn from our wicked ways, we could follow him and he would forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the issue. This is why we live out here. This is why we do what we do, because we are going to take as many people to heaven with us as we possibly can. But the one remaining decision, the one remaining decision is the personal decision. Yes. That's the decision that, Gloria, you had to make. Yes. I have to make. Yes. Marnie has to make the decision to make Jesus our personal Lord and Savior. Yes. And it says, you see, there's commands that God gave that are irrevocable. The Bible says, he that believeth not is damned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, in order to get to heaven, the, the Philippian jailer says, what, what, what must I do to get to heaven? And and Paul says, you got to believe on your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you got to open your heart to him and confess him as Lord and Savior in your life. And he says, thou shalt be saved and thy household. Yes, yeah. our families, yeah. yes. And so this is this is the biggest decision. This is why this is why we're doing these these programs. Because I remember growing up, I never heard anything about I didn't know that I didn't realize that do you know that when Jesus came to earth, we always hear hear about people going from our temporal world, which is this world that we live in, to heaven. They die, they go to heaven or they go to hell, but they go into the eternal world. But Jesus one that came is the one that came from the eternal world to the temporary world. Mm, he, he came here to rescue us, to make, to pay the price for the sins that would satisfy the father, which is in heaven. And these gifts are wonderful. You see what the, what just think of the gifts are irrevocable. Then first of all, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. The father gave up his son. Yes. Oh my. I mean, what a, what a choice. What, what love. I yeah. mean, I'm a mom. You know, I'd have a hard time. <laughs> yes. Then So then there's the son. The father gave his son. What did the son give? He gave his only, he gave his life for a, a ransom for our sins. Yes. He paid the penalty for our sin by satisfying the justice that the father would demand. And so he, now when we stand before God, God will say, it's okay, father, this is one of mine. Yeah. This is who I died for. And then the Holy Spirit. What did the Holy Spirit give you? The Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He gave us power. He gives us comfort. The Lord says, I'm going to send the comforter to be with you. Yes. Oh, what a gift. And so with that comfort, with the power, and then the destination is irrevocable. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And he says, my father's house are many, they say dwellings, or you can say mansion, whatever it is. But there's going to be plenty for us to stay. And then he says, what he's also going to do is he's going to take and he's going to recreate you're going to give a brand new heaven and a brand new earth. Yes. And it's going to come down new Jerusalem. So gifts of God are, are they're yeah. irrevocable. Yes, it's wonderful. And so this is why. Then I want to tell you a little bit about, I have an illustration that I use. And I, I can see this in my mind all the time. I've always admired. There's an ad on television right now. It talks about a guy. He's a some sort of announcer from a TV station or something, but he jumps out of this helicopter and oh, you see yeah. him, you see him snap. He reaches down and he snaps and pulls this rope and that releases the parachute so that he's able to come down safely. And so what happens is God wants us, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is that? guy doing when he pulls the ripcord on the parachute he's calling on it yes to save him <laughs> Call, calling on. the same thing is like you see uh, you know life jackets out in the water yes they keep you from drowning keep you from dying so if you're in that airplane which the paratroopers do through the wars and so forth they at thousands of feet, feet in the air they would jump out of the airplane Someone, they got more nerve than I have. <laughs> well, someone said, why would someone want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? But, <laughs> but, but anyway, they jump out. And what should be the number one thinking in their minds? I got to pull the chute. If I'm going to live, I have to pull the ripcord on my parachute. Yes. And that will, that will give life. And the Bible says... If you want to live for eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ, you must call on the name of the Lord. And by calling on God's name and saying, I'm sorry for your sins, we pass from spiritual death mm -hmm. onto spiritual life. And this is why it's because if you don't call, it's a long drop at thousands of feet. You'll, you won't come down like a parachute does at a slower speed. You'll drop like a rock. Mm -hmm. And and God doesn't want you to do so. That's why He went to the cross so that we would not perish. But we say a no decision. You had a line you used to do. Yeah, say, uh, 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 without uh, making a decision, a none decision yeah. is a no decision. Yes, yes. You can't be decisive. You can't walk the line. You have to. You just have to draw a line in the sand and say, "I will," yeah. and then stick with it. That it's not revocable, but it's irrevocable. That you will not leave the presence of God but it takes discipline you know life isn't easy he didn't promise it would always be great it's, it's like uh you know you have to make sure that you know that in the word he says he's promised he'll be with us through our trials he will walk with us and it doesn't mean it's always going to be easy but he will see us through the key word there is through he didn't say he's going to bring you there and you're going to stop there you're going to stay there you're going to die there or you're going to wilt there through means you're going to go through a door. You don't stand in the door frame. You go one way or the other. Either you back on one way or the other, but you go through that. And he's promised that he would go through the trials with us. Because if we hold on 
and it's getting tougher by the day is read the headlines, see what's happening in the world today. It just breaks your heart and the evil and the killings. And, you know, even on the news, you've watched it this morning early after we'd had uh, devotions and watching to see where the floods and the earthquakes and the fires and the tornadoes, it is just nonstop. It's like, it's just po popping up all over the world. Yes. And there's, and I told Larry, it's almost like there were, when the kids, when, when Donovan was young, when he was just probably a preteen, they had this game called the Pac-Man. Oh yeah. Do, 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 do. And they had a little, like a little <laughs> Pac-Man and they would, if you, some of you would remember this game, but it was like little, like little gremlins and they would come along and they would just eat up all these other little, little, whatever they use for the game. But that's kind of like that right now where the devil has got their little Pac-Man out there and they're nibbling at their, nibbling at our feet. They're coming after our family, coming after our marriages. We have to be so alert and listen, we need God. We need to be with the family of God. We need to make sure that our children, more so than ever, with what is being taught and what is not being taught in schools, that realize that the devil is out to destroy and we need to, the, the biggest influence we're going to have is in the home, is in the home. Because these little kids are being taught so many things of transgender, yes, you yes. know, whatever it is. They don't know yes. where they belong. They don't know who they belong to. And, and we love these people. I'm not saying that's not hate, but we need to, uh, if there was a fire, if we saw a house on fire, we had a little kids outside, would we just say, go ahead and run in there? Or would we say, Stay away from that. That is, that'll kill you. If there's certain things in life, we have to just really make it really plain to our little children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. And we see that. You know, I was thinking about how that after, before the Lundstroms really became a believers in Jesus Christ, before we were, uh, we didn't go near a church, Harley. Just a few times as a really young. Holidays. Well, not even Christmas, that. maybe. No, I didn't do that. It was we just very rarely ever went to church, and but I with my grandmother I went sometimes as a very young child, but we didn't have any churches in our lives. But then after we've come to Christ, we've had many churches in our life, many denominations in our life. Oh, all the denominations we've preached and sung in, and a lot of those churches had what we call a confirmation. Mm -hmm. Yes, they would. It's great. They would study for a while and then they would take their confirmation examination and they would be approved by the pastor or whoever approves them. And I got thinking about uh, the reason that I never followed Christ or, or, or went to church was I said, how can we really know? we got the right church because this guy, everybody's pointing to the mm -hmm. same direction saying mm -hmm. we have yeah. the way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But, but then when I finally came to Christ and I pass from spiritual death under spiritual life, there was a confirmation that a knowing that. I, a, yeah, absolutely. That's knowing. over in first John five, I think verse 13. It says that we can know that we have peace with God. What kept me from coming to church or even checking out churches was, it was like walking into a casino, throw the dice, which one's got the right one? We didn't know, you know, you don't know. So you didn't know if he's gonna win or lose. Yeah, you didn't know. And you weren't gonna gamble on that. So when I found out that I could know and have peace, the Bible says it's peace that passes all understanding, a peace that'll blow your mind. Yeah, that's great. And so what happens is, is that we want you, and you have to realize if you don't receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't cry out to him and say, God, I believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you in my heart. I want you to wash me with the only sin remover ever known to mankind. And that is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. You got to have it. It's, you it's, have to know. And I like that. I just remember that line you used to say, if you don't know that you're born again, you're going to heaven, you won't go. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't go. So that's the choice that we all have to make. And so that's the, what we come to usually at the end of the Coffee and Connects. 
we give everyone an opportunity because, you know, you can be by yourself someplace. And what would you have to lose? You could say, well, I'll check this out. In other words, he's, he sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty sure about that. We're very certain about it because that's the scripture declares it explicitly. And so if you pray with us and, and mean this in your heart, you will find that you will be a different person when the prayer is finished. Yes. Let's pray. Lord in heaven. Lord in heaven. We come to you today. We come to you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Admitting. Admitting. That we have sinned. That we have sinned. The Bible says we've sinned. The Bible says we have sinned. Because all have sinned. Because all have sinned. And sin, the wages of sin is death. And the wages of sin is death. And I will receive you, Jesus. And I receive you, Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Write my name. Write my name. In the Lamb's Book of Life. In the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm going to serve you. And I'm going to serve you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. It's worth it all to, to know the Lord. And uh, I'm thankful that as, as young people that Jesus spoke to our, that the Holy Spirit that you talked about was so present that we felt that as a child in church. And then, and I'm sure, Marnie, when, I, I know you gave your heart to Christ at a young age. And you, there's a knowing. It's just something that you know that you know that brings that peace. Yes, yes. You know, as I was thinking about those four decisions and, and how really each decision uh, required the next decision, you know, like if, if Lucifer wouldn't have made the decision to rise up against God, we wouldn't have needed the other decisions, right? But right. every decision led to uh, the opportunity for the next decision to be made. And so as I was thinking about the that that parachute uh, illustration that you used and just talking about how uh, for each one of us, there's going to come that moment where we have to make the decision. And and as you're going, I, and I can even, you know, hear it among people. They're like, well, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a God, maybe there is, and I'm not really sure. I'll just wait and see. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about that parachute and you, you didn't make a decision not to open it you're just you know i mean you're not opening it no. but you're you're going well i just you know i'm not opposed to it i just i'm just gonna wait and see mm -hmm. but you didn't open it which released that which would save you and so the final whether you made the the non-decision that final end was going to be the same death and yes. destruction. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah. that, that was such a powerful illustration and, and, and the importance that we need to make a decision. Every single one of us has that opportunity before us to make that decision, to be saved, to be yes. rescued and how yes. beautiful of our God to provide the yeah. pathway to rescue. And it, yes. it, 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 if you just, stop and think about it for a minute it just overwhelms you because you just realized what he gave so that we could live and it's yes. so beautiful so thank you what? for sharing just the the decisions that lead to um really eternity with him um if we choose to make that decision by the end of today we will have this uploaded to www.larrylundstromministries.org. Just click on the big banner on the front page. It will take you to all of the CC Live videos. This one will be the first one as it is the most recent. And if you would like to share this amazing, simple, gospel message with someone, please click on the top right hand corner, the three dots. It will open up the link and give you ways that you can share it. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your comments, Marty. How blessed we are. And uh, I tell you what, we're blessed to have you join us yes. every week. We are blessed with so many people that are sending notes and emails and sending prayer requests in. Just remember, you are not a number to us. You are not just somebody out a zip code. You are our family and we yes. care about you and we pray that you will pray for us. And uh, together we reach the loss. We encourage the hurting. Have a wonderful week until we meet next week and have that cup of coffee. And I'm going to have another one. I think I need another one to make it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. 50 years ago in South Dakota, the 
Lundstrom's knelt in prayer to God one night. There the Savior sent us with a message that we should sing about eternal life. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing a happy song until we hear God's call to glory land. We've met a lot of friends in all our travels. We're so blessed. We know their prayers have helped us stay alive. And we're so thankful. So if you ever feel impressed to mention my name, then you know it's my turn to drive. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing out. Until we hear God's call to glory land And we'll keep traveling on Singing a happy song Until we hear God's call to glory land